Welcome everybody. Welcome to Claydesk. My name is Syed. So the software industry is booming, right? We keep producing massive amounts of code every single year. So the core of the industry life cycle or the SDLC, software development life cycle, that's the process that guides software teams how to structure and plan their work. So let's go on a journey and I'm going to walk you through the entire concepts of SDLC and we'll take a look at what SDLC is all about, trace its evolution. We'll also take a look at the main models, very very important, that are used in the industry, right? So we'll discover the SDLC phases, which basically a piece of software goes through the process and then of course the key performance in each one. And of course ultimately I'm going to give you the entire bird's eye view of the entire process, right? So let's begin with understanding the SDLC process. So building software is a process. It can't just, you know, it's not just one thing. It takes steps, right? So to measure, maintain, improve results, it's constant. So different approaches to software development provide all of these steps, right? So they're not cut from the same cloth but you can piece them together and depending on your circumstances, you can of course use wildly different approaches on software development, right? Many variables such as, for example, industry, size of the organization, then you have the project itself, estimated time frame, costs, right? The budgets are all important. So the common is that it certain it still follows a certain flow though right doesn't matter what it is so the framework fleshes out the all of the phases that are required and needed and the tasks that are required to be performed along the way right so the SDLC process is a well structured schedule that needs to be accomplished so it decides on the best software development approach for example within the estimated given time frame and of course the cost allocations so the SDLC is often considered the subset of a system development life cycle, which is the oldest framework in developing information systems. So basically starting from 1960s, right? It evolved since then. And of course, because of the business needs and requirements, this how this actually became to be mainstream, right? So from late 70s, for example, a variety of software development methodologies have emerged in the 1990s moving forward. And some of them are object-oriented programming, Scrum, for example, you may have heard of this, right? So the Agile process also emerged in the 2005-ish area. So the structure of the software development process, let's talk about that, right? So the development of the software development is a sequence of well-coordinated stages. So depending on the development approach, the number of SDLC steps can definitely vary. So we'll take a look at the five stage and the seven stage flavors of the SDLC, right? Let's take a look at the five stage version first. So the five stage version of the software development is basically first is requirement and analysis. This is a crucial phase where the interaction with the client and the stakeholders is very, very essential. So they need to determine the expected results that is the goal of the software product, which you're developing. So besides the customer requirement, there are all kinds of other factors to take into account. So for example, you could take into account architecture of the actual software, the functional requirements, non-functional requirements, the performance of the actual, and then of course the design related aspects as well. So to successfully complete this stage, a document called software requirement specification is developed. It is the foundation of everything that will take place from this moment on. So success of a development project definitely depends highly on the requirements analysis. The key performance, by the way, is the business analyst, BA, very, very important person. He manages or she manages all of the business requirements from the customer and the stakeholders, right? And does a thorough analysis to translate information between stakeholders and developers. So then we have the design aspect the architecture, the design, which is based on an established requirements. And this is where you figure out the development environment. 
the programming languages, Java, Python, what are you going to use, right? The architectural framework, the hardware, developers, number of developers. And also the time to determine the best strategy that you're going to use. The role of the systems architect is essential here. They need to consider all the prerequisites from the prerequisites, right? From the document itself, that is basically a design paper, which I'm going to talk about in the next step, which is, of course, the coding phase. So now you have the documentation. The developers are well aware of the design specifications. Now the work gets divided into modules and the coding begins. So the client also should be involved at this stage because they make sure that all measures are taken for the entire product and meets their expectations, right? So producing a working software is the ultimate you know, requirement at this stage. Once the coding is done, then you have a workable product, then you have the testing phase, right? So depending on the test strategy outlined in the design specification document, it's going to happen in a variety of ways. So for example, the goals nevertheless remain the same, absolutely. First, verify that all of the initial requirements are met. And second, determine if there are any bugs in the code. So testers are the key performance here, right? And the result of their efforts is a fully functional software ready to be launched and provided to the customer. Then you have maintenance. And of course, there's no such thing as a, per as a perfect software, right? So therefore, customer service plays a huge role in the development process. And many times that's overlooked, by the way. So real-time issues emerge and they need fixing maybe some feedback from the customer. So ongoing maintenance is definitely, definitely good to have a satisfied customer. So those were the five stages. Let's take a look at the seven stages of this process is a little different. So just adding two more stages, right? So I'm gonna talk about these seven stages now. I talked about the five stages of SDLC and now the seven stages. The first, of course, is planning, right? So another way to kick off the software development lifecycle is through the planning phase. So it precedes the requirement gathering and seeks the feedback as much as possible, the input from stakeholders, input from you know engineers, business partners, and clients actually shape the scope of the project. And you can answer questions such as, what has to be done, for example, right? What resources are needed? How much time will it take, right? And of course, how much will it cost? Those are the basic questions. Requirements and analysis is the next phase in this seven step process, right? So based on feedback from the client, you can then feed these requirements to software engineers. And of course, communication is essential, guys. I cannot stress this enough, right? And that's really, this phase should produce documentation also so that it serves a foundation for the next phase, which is system design. Again, repeating from the, the five step process, just adding a couple of more steps here, right? So at this point within system design, you can determine the functional means, you know, to deliver the project. So once you prepare, the design plan gets presented to the business, right? and then you incorporate all of the feedback before the actual programming or coding begins. Software development is the next step, logical step, right? So the requirements are clear. Software engineers can now start working on the pro project, right? So the goal is to create a working program that is ready for testing. And this is really the start of the production within the SDLC process. And of course, next step is testing, right? The, the role of the QA team is to make sure that all the requirements are met, the, the quality of the software is utmost, bugs get fixed, for example, right? There's a whole list of software testing methods, like unit tested, functional testing, integration testing, performance testing, and so on. And then we have, of course, the, the ultimate goal is to have automation testing, running successive rapid tests on the actual code, like maybe you can use Jenkins, you can use Bamboo, and other tools that are available. Then once the test, once the code has passed, it's ready to be deployed, right, into production environment. So now, depending on the company policy or your objective, now this process may require approval from various stakeholders, right? But typically that's automated, right? So you create a piece of code, you get the approval, and then you go to the next step. 
And then let's go to the next step, which is maintenance and operations. So once the software is released in production, of course, all kinds of issues can still crop up, right? So through monitoring, you can definitely identify them and solve them. And you can also add new features into the product, by the way. And that's the phase where performance can be measured and improved. Now let's talk about the SDLC models, right? So the process of developing a piece is largely universal, right? There's definitely room to add more stages or simplify the existing ones, but it's essentially the same thing. But when we look at development methods, for example, okay, although they observe the entire same process, but we do it in different, different ways. Many people do it different ways. So you gotta choose based on your own requirements, many factors that you need to consider. It's always the balance between the client needs and the practical details of developing software. Of course, there are factors such as complexity of the project itself. Um, you can have the selected technology, what are you gonna be using, the tools, right? And of course, the team size, how many developers you have, what are their skill level, and so on. So, let's talk about the different types of models, right? SDLC methodologies. First is waterfall, very, very important. This is a linear sequential design process. So, oldest known method, still used in software engineering. It originates from the manufacturing and the construction industries way back in the 1970s, and that's the waterfall, right? So, progress of a development project within a waterfall strictly down the SDLC pipe, just like a st you know, stairs going down. So, once the previous phase is completed, you move on to the next phase, and then you move on to the next phase, and so on. So there's no defined process of going backwards, by the way. So the SDSC waterfall is a very, very structured approach. It works well, by the way, when the requirements and activities are well-defined, understood, documented, boom, it's easy. Technology is reliable, it works well. Support team is available, and you estimate a short-term project. The downside, by the way, is definitely related to lack of flexibility because you can't implement the newly emerging requirements along the way. You have to go back from step one and then follow the sequential order, right? So that's really the waterfall in a nutshell. Now, the other, the next method I wanna talk about within the SDLC is the iterative software development. Now this method is based on the notion that software can be built through a sequence of repetitive cycles, for example, right? So it starts with a simple set of requirements. At each round, the engineers learn from, you know, the behavior of the earlier versions of the software, and then they're able to enhance their functionality. The biggest advantage of this approach is that the working prototype of this you know, software gets produced after each cycle is completed. Now, this makes it easier to implement changes, by the way, right, to identify risks. The SDLC testing is relatively easier when performing at each iteration. Now, the disadvantage of the iterative model of software development, by the way, comes down to resources and costs, right? Because raising a number of iterations consume more resources and more people, okay? And that's really, the project completion is also undetermined, so therefore a little bit of risk involved. So it needs highly skilled experts performing the risk analysis of this particular methodology, right? So it's not suitable for smaller projects. Next is Agile, which is fairly, fairly popular, is relatively new, but still quickly gained popularity around the globe. So the Agile SDLC is based on developing or delivering smaller portions of software seeking immediate feedback from client, right? So at the core of this lies strong collaboration and communication between teams, and each cycle lasts one to three weeks, by the way, at which point the working module you know, feature gets delivered to the client, and then, of course, the process then repeats itself. That's Agile development. Testing, by the way, is performed at each iteration early on, and that encourages demonstration of the functionality and acquiring feedback, right? So this model it provides definitely provides clear visibility and results, right? 
and of course it gives flexibility to various you know software developers and engineers so there since there are no requirements for heavy documentation there's a risk of dependency on certain individuals and this can definitely definitely be a challenge when it comes to knowledge transfer to the new members of the team then we have of course the lean software development which is part of the agile software development method right and the SDLC process follows and consists of seven basic principles right so that's lean first eliminate waste amplify learning decide as late as possible you know deliver as fast as possible empowering the team building integrity and of course looking at the big picture and that's really the key to understanding this particular model is through these principles and now that will lead to transforming those into functional agile practices and implementation into the working process so lean principles are definitely organized around the idea of producing as much value as possible for the end users right while optimizing at the same time quality speed costs and business expectations and that's really the goal of lean methodology now next is very important and very popular is DevOps right so the DevOps model is partially based on both agile and lean practices right it's a newly emerging that ties in close collaboration between the software development and the operations team during the entire development life cycle so the key aspect of DevOps right is the emphasis on automation of the development process ultimate goal is to shorten the SDLC and at the same time deliver high quality software innovative results aligned with business requirements to the customer now this approach the developers and operations team and QA members are all on the same page the DevOps engineer goal role by the way is to make sure all of this happens smoothly right and this leads to timely results and better software so these are the common top ones models that I've talked about as far as software development lifecycle is concerned so no matter which you use no matter which methodology you use depending on your own business requirements your project or your company policies you can then choose any one of these let me know if any questions and of course make sure you like comment and subscribe because Claydesk is your number one channel for e-learning. And by the way, understanding software development lifecycle, the ones that I've just talked about, if you have any questions, post in the comment area. I'll be happy to answer and of course explain further if you still have questions, because this is a very, very important concept, especially if you're beginning into, or your journey into the software development lifecycle as a programmer, as a DevOps engineer, as a solutions architect it doesn't matter which role you opt but understanding the very foundation basics of software development lifecycle is key my name is Syed thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time